Harper Audio presents Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Performed by Martin Jarvis. Copyright 1990 by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Production copyright 2009 by HarperCollins Publishers. Bohemian Rhapsody by Freddie Mercury. Copyright 1975 B. Feldman and Company Limited. Trading as Trident Music. All rights for US and Canada, controlled and administered by Glenwood Music Corporation. All rights reserved. International copyright secured. In the beginning, it was a nice day. All the days had been nice. There had been rather more than seven of them so far, and rain hadn't been invented yet. But clouds massing east of Eden suggested that the first thunderstorm was on its way, and it was going to be a big one. The angel of the eastern gate put his wings over his head to shield himself from the first drops. I'm sorry, he said politely, what was it you were saying? I said, that one went down like a lead balloon, said the serpent. Oh, yes, said the angel, whose name was Aziraphale. I think it was a bit of an overreaction, to be honest, said the serpent. I mean, first offence and everything. I can't see what's so bad about knowing the difference between good and evil anyway. It must be bad reasoned Aziraphale, in the slightly concerned tones of one who can't see it either and is worrying about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been involved. Or well, they just said, get up there and make some trouble, said the serpent, whose name was Crawley, although he was thinking of changing it now. Crawley, he decided, was not him. Yes, but you're a demon. I'm not sure if it's actually possible for you to do good, said Aziraphale. It's down to your basic, you know, nature. Uh, nothing personal, you understand. You've got to admit it's a bit of a pantomime, though, said Crawley. I mean pointing out the tree and saying don't touch in big letters. Not very subtle, is it? I mean, why not put it on top of a high mountain or a long way off? Makes you wonder what he's really planning. Best not to speculate, really, said Aziraphale. You can't second-guess ineffability, I always say. There's right and there's wrong. If you do wrong when you're told to do right, you deserve to be punished. <laughs> yeah. They sat in embarrassed silence, watching the raindrops bruise the first flowers. Eventually, Crawley said, Didn't you have a flaming sword? Yeah, said the angel. A guilty expression passed across his face and then came back and camped there. You did, didn't you? said Crawley. It flamed like anything. Yeah, well, it looked very impressive, I thought. Yes, but, well, lost it, have you? Oh, no, no, not exactly lost, more... Well, Aziraphale looked wretched. If you must know, he said, a trifle testily, I gave it away. Crawley stared up at him. Well, I had to, said the angel, rubbing his hands distractedly. They looked so cold, poor things, and she's expecting already. And what with the vicious animals out there and the storm coming up, I thought, well, where's the harm? So I just said, look, if you come back, there's going to be an almighty row, but you might be needing this sword, so here it is. Don't bother to thank me, just do everyone a big favour, and don't let the sun go down on you here. He gave Crawley a worried grin. That was the best course, wasn't it? I'm not sure it's actually possible for you to do evil, said Crawley, sarcastically. Aziraphale didn't notice the tone. Oh, I do hope so, he said. I really do hope so. It's been worrying me all afternoon. They watched the rain for a while. Funny thing is...